Welcome to ACCA Advanced Audit and Assurance, how frequently each international financial reporting standards and international standards on auditing are tested over these few years. Now, from the September, December 2020 up to the latest September, December 2023, that these are the following IFIs to be tested. So for example, almost in each and every sitting, you will need to focus on the property plant equipment, especially for the depreciation and when to de-recognize the property plant equipment. And you will always need to focus on the revenue recognition according to IFRS number 15 in terms of when to recognize revenue at a point in time or over the period of time. At the same time, of course, knowing the principal and the agent relationship, that's very important there. Of course, very importantly, almost in every sitting, the IAS number 37, provisions and contingent liabilities, contingent assets may come up. So possibly the warranty uh, provision liability to be recognized by the company. Alternatively, it's the lawsuit issue. So we always need to focus on the criteria in the IAS number 37 in terms of its probable cash outflow, present obligation, and reliably estimating the expenses that we are going to be paying for. Impairment of non-current assets, according to IAS number 36, will be absolutely key there almost in every sitting. So make sure that you know the criteria of how to determine the recoverable amount, which means the higher of value in use and fair value minus cost of disposal, and being able to coming up with ideas of how each of the elements may go wrong, particularly in the risk questions. Eyes to inventories, yes, sometimes comes up. Of course, there's more of the uh, AA stuff, but in the AAO, possibly the work in progress inventories may be tested or perhaps the inventories held at the third party warehouse and what sort of things we need to consider when we are auditing that possibly in combination with the ISA 402 when we are using the service organization. Now leases according to IFRS number 16 will be very key there as well. You need to know possibly from a lessee's point of view how we're going to be measuring the right of use asset including the subsequent measurement in terms of its depreciation and also the amortized cost method applied to a lease liability. But sometimes in the actual exam, the, for example uh, for the uh, March 2024 exam yeah, just released and my top tip will be related to the leases and in particular the sale and lease back and of course the exam link team may say that this may not be a sale when we sell the things to others when we lease it back but this sale may not be a sale and therefore the monies that we get will be to debit cash and to credit the financial liability rather than cheating it as the normal sale and lease back transaction. So you need to be able to discuss about that in a risk question and sometimes uh, not very likely but possibly in the audit procedure question as well. Eyes number 38 related to intangible asset especially when we acquire a piece of intangible asset such as the patent and something like that. We need to know the criteria of it but more importantly from the AAA exams point of view the research and development cost accounting treatment will be very key there. You need to understand the criteria when to recognize the development cost and when to measure it like the intangible asset. You need to fulfill the criteria I use in my course called user team. IS number 40 sometimes came up related to investment properties. So make sure that you understand the investment property is always relates to the fair value. Now, fair value would be determined according to the IFRS number 13 fair value measurement. But in this paper, very likely that you may be engaging with the experts in providing the value related to the investment property. And this is why you need to background check 
the expert before relying on their work. I's number one presentation of financial statement is also important because especially when you come to the audit report stage in particular that the client's company may not be a going concern entity any longer. So if that's the case then, if you believe that the client's company may have risk or significant risk of not operating itself as a going concern entity, what you should do is that from the client's point of view, the finance director should disclose this fact in the note, okay, of the financial statement. A failure to do that, of course, you will need to qualify your audio opinion. If you believe that the going concern status is not met at all, of course, you will need to require the company to re-prepare its financial statement, not as a going concern basis any longer, but using the breakup basis. Otherwise, you will need to issue the adverse opinion in your audit report, saying that the whole financial statements of a client's company are not true and fair. I fast number 11, joint arrangement, you will need to discuss about when do we have joint control over another entity. So whether or not we need to classify that as a joint operation or the joint venture using the equity accounting principle. But do remember that when we determine whether or not that will be a joint arrangement, that's according to the IFRS number 11. However, in terms of its accounting treatment regarding the joint venture using equity accounting, we need to account for that using equity accounting per the IAS number 28, investments in associates and that kind of stuff. So make sure that if you're not quite familiar with the IFRS numbers, don't quote them in the actual exam, but say to the exam link team that per the IFRS and put the name uh, on uh, of the standard in your answer. IFRS number three, business combinations in relation to the goodwill, at the same time, how we measure the non-controlling interests, either using the full method, i.e. at the fair value, alternatively using a partial method. So making sure that you're ready for that. IFRS number nine, related to financial instruments, related to the planning stage, related to, let's say, the convertible bond, of how we should account for it, and making sure that you know the subsequent measurements related to it, and also the fair value bit, okay, because we need to get that value from the expert. So relying on the expert's work, so related to IFRS number nine there. IS number 24, related party disclosures. Yes, yes, sometimes that's very important because if it comes up and if you're not fully preparing for this particular standard, okay, no correct answer will be shown. This would be the disclosure standard, disclosing the nature and the transaction uh, detail and the date of transaction, the parties involved, okay, in the disclosure note, involves no accounting journal entries at all. Now, related to related party disclosure, you need to identify that, yes, the parent and subsidiary transactions uh, would be the related party ones. Of course, the transaction of your company with the uh, key personnel in your management team will also be the related party transactions. So make sure they always tell the examining team about the risk of material misstatements that there might be a risk of under disclosure of the related party uh, details there. The boring cost, which means the interest expense, yes, sometimes it comes up, of course. Um, the key bit related to a borrowing cost in the AAA paper, you must understand when to start to capitalise the interest expense and when to pause to capitalise that expense and when it should be ended. Okay, so make sure that you're ready for that. Another standard, IFRS number 8, related to operating segment, is all about the disclosure requirement. IFRS number 5, non current asset held for sale and discontinued operations. Yes, you need to understand that the non-current asset, such as the pp &E, may need to be reclassified into a non-current asset held for sale in the current asset section 
in your statement of financial position. But you need to demonstrate that uh, the management has the intention of selling that asset, the assets available for immediate sale, and we are locating a buyer actively, and the sale is expected to complete within one year from the date of reclassification. So make sure they always quote these four sentences in your answer. The ice number eight related to the uh, changes of accounting policies, estimates, and also corrections of accounting errors. Uh, sometimes it pops up. Ice number 20, government grant. So we re receive the grant if it has conditions attached to it just to credit the deferred income liability rather than putting it into the income directly. IFAS number 13, fair value of measurement is something that relates closely with when we are using the expert's work in determining that fair value. The ICE number 21, the changes in foreign exchange rate. Yes, uh, we need to understand that if that involves the single transaction, which means you are dealing with the foreign customer or supplier, any forex rate changes resulting in we need to end up receiving more money or paying more, so we need to put them into the PL directly. The ICE number 10, it means after the reporting period, you need to tell the examining team how to differentiate the adjusting and non-adjusting event. Of course, quite often this standard will be tested at the review stage of the audit in combination with the ISA 560 subsequent event. The ISA number 19, employees benefit, yes it came up okay, uh, in, a, in, in a March sitting, yes related to employee benefit and we predicted that uh, correctly related to the accounting treatment for it. The IFAS number 10, consolidated financial statement so make sure that you know how to determine control okay so for example we've got the uh, power instrument uh, we've got the power instrument when exercising it uh, we can affect the variable return of the investee we can direct its relevant activity so make sure you always quote them okay in your answer now, in terms of ISA, which means the International Standards and Auditing from September, December 2020 up to September, December 2023 for these papers. Now, very importantly, you must understand when we are communicating things with those charged with governance, if you find out the, especially the, the clients' companies' internal controls with significant deficiencies so, so make sure they communicate them um, with those charged with governance on a timely basis related to the quality management per the isqm number one so this is commonly seen especially in the question two the isa 600 related to the audit of groups how we determine the significant component frequently pops up okay over the years three times here ISA 720 related to other information, you always need to keep an eye on to that. Okay, so make sure that let's say the chairman's statement and director's reports are consistent with the financial information. The 250 related to laws and regulations according to ISA 250, yes, always be the very, very important standard in the AAA paper. So make sure they always quote our steps in our course, okay, when you are seeing such requirements. The ISA 220, okay, related to a specific engagement when talking about the quality control is tested in combination with the ISQM number one, okay, usually in the question two. The ISA 315, when we are identifying assessing the risks of material misstatement, you always need to understand the client's entity so uh, before we dip into the risk of material misstatement. So this is why the business risk issue need to be considered there. The going concern according to ISA 570 will most likely to be tested in combination with the IAS number one presentation of financial statement. The key audit matters according to ISA 701, uh, so this will be 
always very important. So the key or the matter paragraph, you always need to tell the examining team that we are issuing the key or the matter paragraph. This does not mean that we need to qualify our audio opinion. So always get this easy mark, okay? So by putting the sentence in your answer. Subsequent events according to the ISA 560 in combination with the IAS number 10 event after the reporting period. And of course, the prospective financial information related to the forecast date, uh, statement of financial position and cash flows, yes, normally tested in the question two. The ISA 300 planning the audit, yes, you need to come up with the audit procedures on various items. ISA 210 agreeing the terms of the audit engagement, sometimes the examining team requires you to discuss the elements within there. The ISA 330, the responses from the auditor to the assessed risks, very importantly, the, in each and every exam, especially in the question one for the risk question, in the conclusion paragraph, always bring one point, okay, from the ISA 330, according to my pro forma answer, to get this easy mark. The 520 analytical procedures, you need to calculate the numbers separately. Um, related to opening balances, according to ISA 510, especially when you are facing the question one in the AAA exam about the detection risk, you always need to quote one sentence related to opening balances to get one mark. And also for the misstatement identified during the audit, so this is particularly important when you're assessing the materiality at the review stage. The ISA 240 related to fraud, so make sure they always copy my pro forma answer that's very similar to the ISA 250 related to the laws and regulations. And the service organisation according to the ISA 402, yes, that's important. The considerations related to each of those, you need to revise on that. And also deficiencies in internal controls, yes, you need to discuss with that, with management, yes, for especially the mere deficiencies of our internal controls. Related parties according to ISA 550 in combination with the IAS 24. And the modification to the opinion, yes, uh, almost coming up in each and every exam, but for the theory part, yes, one time from these settings, but uh, very importantly that you need to understand there would be different types of audit opinions related to a qualified opinion, adverse and disclaimer of opinion uh, when to issue. That's very important there. Okay, so uh, that's for the summary. I hope you're absolutely happy with that. And of course, here for APC, we provide high quality ACCA, AAA courses dated back more than 10 years ago. So uh, you can view these recordings uh, on my YouTube channel and of course you can check out on my website www.globalapc.com and I look forward to seeing you there in my course and you can uh, download the resources from my website to know more about this paper. Best of luck then, bye bye. APC, accounting for your future.